In the centre of the island, an experiment has been set up to study certain aspects of tsetse behaviour. There's a target and an observation pit. With cattle on the island, there's a natural source of ox odour. So the cattle are led into a water-cooled tent and their odour is piped away to a point just below the target. Human odour from the observation pit that might distract the flies is extracted and vented well away from the target. With this basic setup, experiments are underway using decoys impregnated with male sterilants, a subject we'll return to later. Odours that attract tsetse flies have been isolated by chemists in the laboratory and evaluated by insect behaviourists in the field. Some half dozen compounds that are very attractive to the tsetse have been identified so far and most of them can be conveniently dispensed in the field in ways that ensure that they need only be replenished every three months or so. In this case, two glass bottles with wicks are partly buried near the screen. The larger one contains acetone and the smaller one octanol. New attractants are being developed Methyl ethyl ketone is more effective than acetone. Simple targets like this with odour attractants are being used successfully in several African countries in tsetse control campaigns. Although care has to be taken to ensure the correct location of these devices, they have the advantage over other methods of control in that they're relatively cheap. They're non-polluting to the environment and can, with assistance, be maintained by local people. If sprayed with deltamethrin, this only has to be renewed every six months or so. Developments in target and trap technology have produced exciting improvements in tsetse control. But many questions remain to be answered. In this experiment, a ring of electrified screens with calculated gaps surrounds a trap so that the number of flies attracted to it can be estimated by catching and counting a representative sample. And here at Langford, tsetse pupae are being prepared for sterilisation by exposure to radiation from a cobalt source. When the flies hatch, the males will be selected and released in Africa. They will compete with normal males for the available females, but no offspring will be produced. Irradiation techniques like this are often beyond the resources of developing countries, but there are other methods of sterilising tsetse. We can sterilise male tsetse selectively on a target by providing small inanimate objects similar in size and shape to a female on the target. These decoys are visually attractive to the males and if they're dosed with the female sex pheromone of the species, the males will be induced to attempt to mate with them. If these pheromone-baited decoys are also dosed with a chemical sterilant, we have the means of sterilising the males. But they will not sterilise the females and most chemical sterilants are dangerous and highly toxic to other life forms. Safer chemicals for insect pest control are often based on the insect's own hormones. New, very potent analogues and mimics of insect juvenile hormones are now available. They cause development to be arrested at the pupil stage. When applied to a tsetse pupa, development will be arrested after 20 days and it will die. But tsetse pupae are buried in the ground and therefore cannot be treated directly. However, the tsetse reproductive system comes to our rescue because treatment of the adult female with an appropriate formulation of a juvenile hormone results in entry of the hormone into the female's body. She transfers the substance to the larva developing in her uterus. The larva grows and is born normally But after 20 days in the ground at 25 degrees Celsius, development ceases and the pupa dies. 
all the offspring she produces are similarly affected. Targets and traps can now be adapted so that female flies attracted to them will pick up enough of the compound to sterilize them. In this trap, the tsetse pass through a cone of mesh impregnated with synthetic juvenile hormone. Juvenile hormones have no effect on male tsetse, but males that make brief contact with them can pick up sufficient material so that when they mate, enough is transferred to the female to affect the larvae she produces. As the graph shows, the sterilization of 1% per day of the males in the tsetse population by exposing them to irradiation or a chemical on a target or in a trap would not produce such a rapid decline in the population as killing 1% per day of both sexes. However, sterilizing 1% per day of both sexes produces ultimately a greater population decline. Targets and traps provide the means of either killing or chemically sterilizing tsetse selectively, since not many other insects are attracted by such devices. Attempts are being made to exploit target and trap technology, to increase trap efficiency, and to use specially formulated volatile, attractive pheromones and juvenile hormone compounds at a level of technology suitable for self-help campaigns in Africa. But there are plenty of problems. Spraying from the air in carefully designed and monitored campaigns remains the most effective method of tsetse control. But it's expensive and requires skilled operators. And reinvasion takes place from neighboring unsprayed areas. Targets, screens and traps add a valuable bonus. But the materials from which they're made can be used for other purposes. And they often disappear. The new methods, based on pheromones and hormones, have yet to be evaluated. The search goes on.